Horkheimer and Adorno are, are trying to understand why we participate in our own control or oppression. They are interested in the persistence of domination, despite the possibilities for freedom. And they, they trace this uh, problem, the, the persistence of domination, back to the Enlightenment. Enlightenment, understood in the widest sense as the advance of thought, has always aimed at liberating human beings from fear and installing them as masters. Yet the wholly enlightened earth is radiant with triumphant calamity. Enlightenment's program was the disenchantment of the world. Technology is the essence of this knowledge, that is, enlightenment knowledge. Its aim, it aims to produce neither concepts nor images nor the joy of understanding, but method exploitation of, and exploitation of the labor of others. What human beings, they write, seek to learn from nature is how to use it to dominate wholly both it and human, other human beings. Nothing else counts. What they see in this process is that um, quantification comes to be the only uh, framework for, that counts as knowledge. In other words, um, uh, in the 19th century, you might have a uh, narrative, you might have a uh, philosophical explanation. Uh, by the uh, middle of the 20th century, Horkheimer and Donner say that the only thing that really counts as knowledge, the only thing that really will uh, count as science is knowledge that can be quantified, knowledge that results in the domination of the object studied. Human beings purchase the increase in their power with estrangement from that over which it is exerted. Enlightenment stands in the same relation to things as the dictator to human beings. He knows them to the extent that he can manipulate them. If you can only show you understand something by your power of manipulation, understanding is linked to tyranny. Each human being has been endowed with a self of his or her own, different from all others, so that it could all the more surely be made the same. But because the self never quite fitted the mold, enlightenment throughout the liberalistic period has always sympathized with social coercion. Enlightenment has always sympathized with social coercion. The unity of the manipulated collective consists in the negation of each individual and the scorn poured on the type of society which can make people into individuals. Their point is that the persistent pursuit of equality actually creates the grounds for more coercion. Human beings believe themselves free of fear when there is no longer anything unknown. This has determined the path of deep mythologization of enlightenment. Which he equates the living with the non-living as myth had equated the non-living with the living. Enlightenment is mythical fear radicalized. Um, so positivism, what they call positivism, sees every other kind of intellection, every other kind of thinking process as being somehow corrupted by religion and magic. The actual is validated. Knowledge confines itself to repeating it. Thought makes itself mere tautology. The more completely the machinery of thought subjugates existence, the more blindly it is satisfied with reproducing it. Enlightenment thereby regresses to the mythology it has never been able to escape. The critical theory, as I have later developed, lies at the core of the that man das, was gut ist, also die gute, die freie Gesellschaft, in der Gesellschaft, in der wir jetzt leben, nicht bestimmen kann. Dazu, dazu fehlt es uns. Aber wir können die negativen Seiten dieser Gesellschaft, die wir verändern wollen, die können wir ansprechen. Uh, they are, uh desperately trying to understand why we participate in our own domination. And the answer in part is, we think we're being rational when we participate in our own domination. That's what it means to be rational, is to reproduce the status quo.